Oral questions by members? Vancouver Point Grey. Honourable Speaker, in 2011, Ricky Peterson was one of many students attending the Aminata Corporation's University of Canada West. They took her tuition money and then closed their campus without notice the day after the tuition refund deadline. In the news, the spokesperson for Aminata told Ricky and the public that Aminata would do right by the students, that they would get a refund. But that was a lie. Ricky is still paying off a $7,000 BC student loan with no degree to show for it. The agreement the government signed with Emanata said the minister can cancel or suspend their ability to use the word university for any misrepresentation, fraud, or abuse. With conduct like this, why is this company still allowed to use the word university in British Columbia? Yes. Minister of Advanced Education. Well, Madam Speaker, through you, I thank the, uh, the member for his question. And the member certainly may be aware of that uh, government's done a core review, a core review of everything within the Advancement of the Education Ministry. And part of that core review was looking at how the private sector, the, the, the public sector, and the private sector universities are managed. Part of that core review also, uh, as was announced several months ago, and the member certainly knows on the other side, uh, that we're examining how the regulation of the private sector is done. And in fact, the Private Career Training Authority Board has been disbanded. Uh, this government was very concerned about the quality of education. And with that concern of the quality of education, that board was disbanded. The regulation, the regulation of the private sector has been taken within government, and we're working through the process right now, Madam Speaker. We're working through the process to make sure the quality of education in the private for-profit, the non-for-profit, and the theologic sector is done properly and appropriately. We want to make sure education quality stays high in British Columbia. Member Vancouver, Point Grey on a supplemental. Honourable Speaker, this matter is squarely on the minister's desk. There's a company operating that is ripping off BC students. The chair and founder of Eminata, the owner of University of Canada West, Peter Chung, has an unpaid judgment of $12 million in California, owed to students there for lying about employment opportunities in the school's accreditation. His school there was closed by the California government for student loan fraud. Three separate newspapers in India with circulation in the millions have published articles warning Indian students to avoid University of Canada West. The school has three times the student loan default rate of BC's best-known private university, Trinity Western. Why is the minister still allowing this company to operate in British Columbia and use the word university? Minister of Advanced Education. Madam Speaker, as I noted, the quality of education, the quality of education and the educational brand of British Columbia is our number one priority. It's keeping that in mind, Madam Speaker, keeping that in mind, the regulation of the private career training in, in British Columbia has been varied. The board was removed as of just several weeks ago, and, and the deputy minister in my ministry has been appointed as the regulator for all private education in British Columbia. And Madam Speaker, as a result of that, we're going to ensure quality of education continues, that we have the checks and the balances, and the fact that private educators, that private educators continue to provide the best quality education in British Columbia. Vancouver, Point Grey on a further supplemental. Thank you, Honourable Speaker. The Minister would love to put this off on another board, but this is on his desk. The agreement says the Minister has the discretion to pull the use of the word university. Yep. Before joining Emanata, Emanata's current president and their vice president of marketing both worked at private colleges, successfully sued by the governments of Ontario and California for millions in student loan fraud. Here in BC, a former Emanata recruiter told the BC Supreme Court that Emanata executives told them to lie to students about the availability of student loans, mislead students with fake job placement statistics, and show fake portfolios of student work that actually belong to students at other schools. All of this information has been part of the public record, Madam Speaker, for more than a year. Can the minister explain, has his ministry taken any steps to investigate why this school is allowed to use the word university and investigate the track record of this place? Minister of Advanced Education. Well. Uh, 
Madam Speaker, as I noted before, the, the regulation of the private career training institutions of British Columbia were the purview of a board, industry-led board. Madam Speaker, as of several weeks ago, this government made the, made the courageous decision to disband that board, to take the regulation of that industry within government. And part of that, that move is to ensure that there's continued quality, that we continue to look at, that students are served, Madam Speaker, and we're going to continue to do that. Member for Vancouver Hastings. Uh, thank you, Honourable Speaker. And Honourable Speaker, the buck stops with the minister, not with the board. It's the minister who's responsible for this. <laughs> Honourable Speaker, the last time we talked about the Emanata Corporation in this legislature, it cost the Premier's only caucus supporter his job in Cabinet. We remember Harry Bloy, Honourable Speaker. He was the ill-fated Cabinet Minister who passed along sensitive information to the founder of Emanata, Peter Chung. Mr. Chung at the time claimed to have influence with high-ranking people in government, apparently enough to get Mr. Bloy to do something to put his seat at the cabinet table in jeopardy. Well, Honourable Speaker, in this province, the term university, a valued term, can only be used with the express permission of the Minister of Advanced Education. This corporation continues to use the term university. So will the Advanced Education Minister tell us, uh, Mr. Chung's claims of influence aside, why is the Liberal government and why is he still allowing this institution to use the term university? Minister of Advanced Education. Well, Madam Speaker, uh, I'm at a loss how I could be potentially any clearer to the members opposite. The, the regulation of the private career aid, uh, in industry was a purview of a board that was industry-led. We've decided, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, this government is ensuring that student quality and education quality is number one. In doing so, we have taken over the regulation of the private career training agency. And Madam Speaker, to ensure quality access to students, ensure the quality of education in British Columbia stays high. So Madam Speaker, those concerns that the members raise we're, are part of that, that regulation change, and Madam Speaker, we're going to continue to work on that. Member for Vancouver Hastings on a supplemental. Honourable Speaker, the responsibility rests with the Minister. The responsibility is on his desk, and he's the one who has to do this, and he shouldn't slough his job off. Honourable Speaker, Mr. Chung and his $30,000 of donations to the BC Liberals isn't the only Liberal insider involved with this, uh, this situation. Gwyn Morgan, the former head of the Premier's transition team, was recently appointed by the Premier to the position of Chair of the Industry Training Authority. Well, Mr. Morgan is also a financial backer of Emanata. He gave the company a half million dollar loan so that they could buy University Canada West. Now, in court documents filed in November, he says they've stiffed him for the full amount plus interest. Honourable Speaker, again, the use of the term university is at the minister's discretion. If the minister revokes Emanata's ability to use the term university, the premier's friend, Mr. Morgan, is almost certain to lose his entire investment. But setting aside Mr. Chung's claims of influence and Mr. Morgan's investment portfolio, why will the minister not revoke the ability of Emanata to use the term university when it discredits advanced education in this province? Minister of Advanced Education. You know, Madam Speaker, in British Columbia, we have a very robust system of public and private universities. We have excellent 25 public post-secondary institutions, complemented, Madam Speaker, complemented, complemented by many, many excellent private institutions that provide excellent education to students. And where, and where that education quality is compromised, we are committed to ensure that education quality stays high, and we're going to ensure that continues. Member for Nanaimo. 
Honorable Speaker, uh, it's very interesting to listen to this minister this morning talk about protecting uh, the reputation of BC's universities when he has an opportunity to do something today to act properly and protect that reputation. We've obtained an email from government staff dated June 5, 2013, and it reads as follows. Hi all, University Canada West is a donor for Friday's event. Their president and CEO is Randy Cox. Please send him an invitation this evening indicating the company's five guests. The event in question was the announcement ceremony as part of the swearing-in of Cabinet, a government event which sold access to corporations. And how much did this company pay for access to this government event? $5,000. Yet after all we've heard about Emanata this morning, is the government investigating Emanata? No, they're selling Emanata access to the Minister of Advanced Education, the Premier and the Cabinet at government events. Wow. So can the Minister of Advanced Education, exercising his responsibility this morning, explain why instead of investigating Emanata, they're selling the Premier Act, and they're selling access to the Premier and the entire BC Liberal Cabinet for $5,000. Minister of Advanced Education. Well, Madam Speaker, uh, as I noted, our, our educational system is compromised of public post secondary. <laughs> Madam Speaker. and a very robust private for profit, private not for profit in theological. We have an excellent university system all across the sector. If there are issues with quality, student quality, student outcomes, Madam Speaker. Members. The Educational Quality Assurance brand of British Columbia, we intend to keep that brand as strong and vibrant as it is. Coquitlam. Thank you, uh, Honourable Chair. My uh, question to the Minister of, uh, Minister of Advanced Education is really quite simple. Uh, does the Minister have confidence in Canada West University as an excellent private educational institution in the province of British Columbia? Minister of Advanced Education. <laughs> Madam Speaker, the private universities and private colleges in British Columbia. Yes. Madam, Speaker, yes. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the private colleges and private universities in British Columbia go through the same degree quality assurance branch as public universities, Madam Speaker. Yes. The rigor by which they put their degrees forward is the same rigor that the public universities must go through, Madam Speaker. When a degree is approved, Madam Speaker, it's the same independent board that examines it. And it's the same rigor that's applied across the sector and will continue to be applied. Member for Port Coquitlamana Supplemental. Thank you, uh, Honourable, Honourable Speaker. Perhaps I wasn't specific enough, Honourable Speaker. <laughs> Does the minister have confidence in Canada West University as being a sound, educational institution in the province of British Columbia that he would recognize recommend to his own kids. Minister of Advanced Education. You know, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, there are 320 private career colleges and institutions in British Columbia. Madam Speaker, 320 that report to their own Board of Governors, their own processes, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the same degree of quality assurance criteria that all public colleges and universities have to go through is the same criteria. But we are committed, Madam Speaker, to ensure, to ensure that we have quality education in public and private institutions. <laughs>